filters are for certain uh, ex, uh, things that come out of your body. So like tears or like spit, because some, some stuff that comes out of your body actually gets, there are certain filters and what's in that waste might be enough to destroy any type. So you might have certain levels of, of salinity uh, in your tears or in your sweat, which might destroy certain things, but you know, maybe not. But for the most part, anything, any liquid or pus or nut or whatever that comes out of your body uh, will contain uh, uh, the virus. Cause that's just how that works. Uh, why do you think the black community uh, believes so much in conspiracy theories? Um, I mean, honestly, I think black people are a people born out of myth, um, heavily related to mythology. Um, we were some of the first people on this planet, uh, at least in our orientation, in terms of human beings. But there were Neanderthals and other varieties of bipedal entities prior to homo sapiens. So really we can't take that credit either. But um, there is something to being the first and being the first for a very long time without any real rapid kind of change and us kind of being the first ones to get first crack at figuring out how the world works. And a lot of that processing or expressing how the world works with zero science at the time leads to a lot of metaphor and myth, right? Relationships to, you know, causal, trying to find causal relationships through correlations. And in that you build up an, an, an immense amount of myth, an immense amount of propensity towards myth. Um, and then a lot of myth was used in slavery, so if you take black folks in America, a lot of what maintained slavery, maintained our uh, uh, subjugation physically was a lot of spiritual um, kind of indoctrination through Christianity, through a subversion of our own kind of uh, native belief systems, which were myths. Um, but it was real to those poke. It was real to those folks in a very, very deep, deep way. Um, and I think that has not changed. And I think that that aspect of the mythology of things is kind of cooked into a lot of us. And from that kind of long kind of anthrop anthropological kind of piece. But even today, a lot of us are cooked and born into myth. We're born because of myth. Right. Our whole existence is surrounded by myth and conspiracy and and all these other things. And when you look at how much of your life is governed or narrated by some 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 mythology or something that you can't prove, um, for some people, it might be as high as, you know, 50 percent of their life, 60 percent of their life. Some folks who really get involved, it might be 100 percent of their life, you know. So, I mean, and I don't just think it's African-Americans. I think it's white people. I think it's Native Americans. I think it's a whole group of folks that were that were that were cooked in this world um, under the guise of myth. A lot of a lot of democracy is built on like myth, like these mythical kind of figures coming out of Greek coming out of Greek mythology or Roman mythology, which powered these concepts of democracy and moral codes and all of this other stuff. The language that we use. So it's it's a lot of a lot of the political aspects are also kind of steeped. In these mythologies or these coarse misunderstandings, communism, socialism, it's all cooked into mythologies of who Marx was, right? Not actually who he was and how his life actually lived, but the myth of his life is more powerful than the reality of his life. The myth of his words is more powerful than the actual content of his words. And the theories and practice, the theory is more powerful than the practice, and for a lot of people, that's reality, you know. 
So that, that I think that's that aspect of it. And I don't think is I don't think black people believe in it more. I just think if you're black, you're going to be a, probably be around more black people, so you're going to see that more. Um, but if you but around a bunch of white people, it's the same kind of shit. You know, people are still celebrating Christmas. And it's like, what? <laughs> that's that's thoroughly not real, but you know, it's more about the theory is more powerful than the practice. There was a Danish study done that showed that said masks uh, make no difference. I don't believe that at all. I don't believe the study at all. To even test that is like who tested that? <laughs> that masks make no difference. I don't believe that. Um, Have I looked at the study? I mean, I look at the premise of what you're saying and I already know masks make a difference. So for a study to come from Denmark, which is interesting, to just come and say that masks don't make a difference um, and you didn't necessarily cite the study, you can link it to me, but that whole premise just seems false to me, right? Because masks do make a difference and you don't need to, you don't need to do a study to prove that masks make a difference, Right. Like you could just do a simple experiment on your own right now and you prove to yourself that masks definitely make a difference with the amount of particulate coming out of your body. Now, what people may what people may miss out on or may misunderstand. And what people may get confused is that everything's not a mask. Right. All masks aren't created equal. If you're walking around with a bandana just tied around your face, that's super porous. Right. And there's a lot of stuff that can come in and out. But if you're if you're wearing a surgical mask or you're wearing like a N95 or even a gas mask uh, is is the, the amount of stuff that's actually coming out of your body and the amount of stuff that's coming out of somebody else's body that you're going to come into contact with is very, very small. The, the, the other side of that is masks are for you. The stuff that's coming out of your mouth for the most part to keep you from getting somebody else sick. Other people wear masks to, for the same thing, right? <laughs> to keep, they wear masks to keep, keep them from getting you sick. So the, the game of masks is like both people have to do it, right? That's kind of the goal, to keep the, a majority of what in us in us or in that mask so it doesn't get to other folks. And it doesn't, it doesn't really work if the system is closed. So if you say masks don't make a difference, the only thing that I could possibly see that would be credible to that is if other people aren't wearing them, <laughs> right? So if other people aren't wearing them, that doesn't mean that the masks are ineffective in and of themselves, like materially. It just means that the, the, what the process of what would need to be in place for a mask to be highly, and even with other people not wearing masks, masks still have a higher level of safety than if you were wearing no mask at all, actually 100% higher than if you were wearing no mask at all. But the if the process is if other folks don't wear masks, right, then the effectiveness of masks drops to zero because nobody's wearing it, right? It doesn't drop the effectiveness of your mask to zero, but it, it drops the effectiveness of the whole kind of program uh, to zero. And I could see you getting into a space talking about that. But if, if, it, if the study is talking about like the materiality of masks, all masks are made equal and... You know, again, like I said, pe like exactly people are ineffective, right? Like if people don't wear masks, then you have to say people not wearing masks is ineffective. You can't just say masks aren't effective, right? You, you can't say that like because that's not true. Yeah, even after COVID, people should put a mask on if they're sick. Yeah, human beings should wear masks. Like everybody should keep a mask with them at all times. Um, 
you know, and wear it as they see as necessary. I mean, you ain't got to wear it around everything, but if somebody coughing on the plane or, you know, you're in an Uber and the driver's coughing and, you know, you'll let down the window. You know, I even did that whenever I would sneeze or cough in a car with someone, I would try and roll down the window and, sne- and sneeze or cough out the car to at least get whatever's coming out of me out the car so it doesn't circulate. So, I mean, but I think, yeah, I think that's not a bad habit to pick up. It's super easy, um, you know, and you can go about your daily routine. And whenever you feel as a situation, it might be a little like you're getting on a train or you get on public transportation and you don't know who's who, then Absolutely. You know, you got that coworker at work who just hacking up his lungs. You know, you got that mask right there at the desk. Whoop, whoop. All good. What about breathing? What about inhaling CO2? Um, the levels of CO2... Um, and just so we're clear, viruses and air are different things, you know, like viruses and air are different. Um, they operate in different ways. They have a different, um, uh, structure and a different makeup, like air isn't viruses, you know, so air is going to move in different ways. Um, Air is not going to have the same limitations, you know, um, so you, air is different, right? And your your body's not going to produce enough CO2 with a cloth mask. It's not going to capture the CO2 to the point that you're, bre- that you're not going to breathe in oxygen or other stuff. Like, that's not how that works. They're not hermetically sealed. Like, if they were hermetically sealed to your face, you would suffocate, Right. Um, you wouldn't be able to breathe at all, let alone breathe in CO2. You wouldn't be able to breathe at all, right? You wouldn't be able to breathe at all. So masks aren't hermetically sealed, meaning that there's, there's a vacuum that's created, right? Um, so with a cloth mask that isn't hermetically sealed, your body wouldn't be able to produce enough CO2 to kill you, you know, or damage you in any real way um, that I can see. Now, if you're wearing like a, a full on rubber thing that is hermetically sealed to your face, you ain't got to worry about CO2 killing you. You're going to you finna die <laughs> like you're finna suffocate. Right. You're going you're gonna to die from a lack of oxygen um, to your brain and you're going to pass out and die. So I don't really see that being an issue with any surgical mask. I've never heard of that ever happening with any type of like surgical masks. Uh, They just don't fit the face that tightly, you know. So I don't think those are the type of masks that people are talking about. Who's this guy? Do I want to bring him in? Uh, your favorite artist starts pushing a dangerous vaccine. I mean, bro, you work at... If, I don't know if this is you who says you work at a hospital for 12 hours a day. You worried about a dangerous vaccine. My nigga, you work in a hospital. Like, that's your choice to work in one of the most dangerous environments on earth. It's vaccines and it's, it's bacteria and viruses that only that are only at hospitals, right? That you can go to the hospital, you can only catch that shit at a hospital because that's how much danger and ridiculousness is just floating around a hospital. So you get, you, that's so crazy that you, you get mad at me for pushing one vaccine, which has not been proven to be dangerous at all, but then kind of quote how you work 12 hours a day at one of the most dangerous places on earth where people die every single day. Like that's crazy to me. That that would be your piece. And you upset with me talking about vaccines, but you work in a goddamn hospital. And you worried about being da- dang- something dangerous. Like, gee, you can. <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I feel like he I don't I, That was weird to me. That's, that's, and he. Yes. And if he works at a, at, a, at a I don't care what anybody tells you. If you have a job at a hospital, you're getting vaccinated or you you're they're not going to let you come to work. 
period. I don't know, <laughs> know what hospital you've been to, but every hospital, if somebody's working at the hospital, if they're a surgeon, a nurse, or a doctor, a, a what, of whatever, they're vaccinated. Just so y'all know. Why do I waste time? Uh, I think it's more people. Um, it's more people that are actually just watching amongst this 374 people that are genuinely interested in getting like at least verifiable information, you know, or easily, easily corrected information about vaccines, about being sick, about viruses, which is the whole point of me doing these IG, IG lives. And so, yes, there's a few rascals who want to come in and like, you know, talk crazy and give their opinions and we bring them in and, and address their questions and normally they run into their own brick walls of logic or they're forced to face their own misunderstandings in public. We've done it many we have a, a high track record of dismantling people's arguments on, on this IG Live. Um so I mean is is it's not like a super big deal like we're wasting time. It's more to just for the other folks that are chimed in to get some advice in the midst of us talking about this stuff. That's all. And at a certain point, we'll stop talking about it, um, you know, and, and move on to something else. So it's making an example of them in front of you. Um, so you can see like that was that same guy that you might be listening to. Right. Who's telling you all this shit and nobody's there to really unpack what he's saying. He or she is saying. But when they come on this live, they definitely get addressed and unpacked. And so you can see like, yo, that dude sound like my cousin. That's the same question my cousin asked. And my cousin ran with this whole shit. And, you know, and now I see this other dude asking the same question. And the response is like, this dude don't know what the fuck you talking about. So now your cousin don't know what the fuck you talking about. So be, be just be confident that. You know, there's people that are willing to take these people to task. I'm sure if you got some questions that you haven't heard me address yet, K Kai, K Kai lifestyle, just uh, I mean, just you can ask it right here, and we'll we'll address it for sure. Be honest with yourself. Have I looked at both sides of the argument? Yo, yo. Yo, yo, what up, what up?
Uh, I don't know what happened to you, bro. You, I'll, I'll try again. Hello? Yo, yo. Hey, Lip Day, how's it going? What's up? What's up with your phone? Was it pointed at the ceiling or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so have uh, you looked at both sides of the argument? Yeah. Oh, so can you explain a little bit about the opposing side? Can we establish what argument we're talking about first? Um, <clears throat> I guess any opposing side about the vaccine, I guess. What do you mean, for, for the vaccine or against the vaccine? Well, since I guess opposed against the vaccine, because all we hear in the media is for the vaccine, you know, so it'd be good to look at both sides of the argument. Uh, do you really hear that? Because I don't really hear that. Like, I don't really hear people like, you got to take the vaccine, you got to take the I don't really hear that. I hear more, you should wear masks, you should social distance. But I don't really hear the media in any form, CNN, low-end media. I don't really see that when I watch the media that I tune into. And I, I hope that I tap into a, an array of different medias. I don't really see that, that people well, are trying to force the vaccine down your throat. They're not, they're not physically forcing you, but they're, they're forcing you by not letting you go to school or traveling or, you know, work. Yeah, but do you think, you should, you think people who aren't vaccinated should be able to go to school? Well, I think if you're sick, you should stay home. But you should right, be forced what, vaccinated, right? But what if you don't know that you're if you're sick? Well, you can always get tested. Yeah, and what if the test proves that you're sick? Should you be allowed to go to school? How do you know? I I haven't seen any any. I heard that there's not many studies showing that kids transmit the disease. To each who'd other. You, who'd you hear that from? Can you provide a source? Who did you hear that from? Same thing as from from doctors. Which doctors? Where? I'll I Google there. I'll Google find the source. I'll have to find the doctor for you. So if you don't have a source and you're asking me to provide a source, I, I'll have about to find something that you brought you. up. Right, but that's something you brought up. Now you're trying to get. You, but you don't have a source for what you brought up, but you want me to get a source that refutes something that you brought up that you don't even have a source for. No, I do have a source for it, but I have to. There's so many things going on on the internet, you know, I don't take them all down. I mean, you but we I mean? got time, I, you're not in a rush right now. Yeah, I, mean, no, I don't have that's a time why, limit. That's why I'm gonna go find it for you. Okay, yeah, hold on, you're gonna find it right. Yeah, okay. okay, I'll message you. Damon, what's up, big bro? <laughs> Chill it, the lad. What's up, man? Chill it. If you can, get somebody to invite you to Clubhouse. That's all they talk about on there. Uh, I have a podcast. It's the Lupe and Roy Show. So Fred, was that Fred? Fred Figo. Uh, we got we on episode ten right now, episode eleven. It's the Lupe and Roy show. You can get it at Spotify Podcast or Google Podcast or Apple Podcast. Um, Free chill. Appreciate that, man. Uh, there was somebody else. Uh, so why should I take this vaccine if I don't know what it contains? Mm, interesting. I mean, let's 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 break that down. That's an interesting question. It's valid. 
Um, and I definitely have an answer for you on that. Um, boom, 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 boom. I'm anti vax waiting. Okay, I'll, I'll get to Scooby. What's this? Scoob Doogie Dude? <laughs> Scoob Doggy Dude? That's funny. Um, We're trying to bring in somebody right now. I'm trying to see if he. He just invited me. Who's that? Lupe Fiasco. Shh, 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 shh. Oh. Dang, I'm not connecting. All right. I don't know what's going on with the big homie who asked about what's in it, but maybe we can, maybe we got this person, Scoop, Scoop, Doggy Dude, which is a good name. I'm mad at that. Yo. Such a pleasure, sir. Such Scoop. a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. Scoop, Doggy Dude, what's up, man? Hey, I'm sorry for calling you Jesse. Uh, I, I just get pissed off when I hear you promoting the vaccine thing. <laughs> Who did you call me? Oh, Jesse, Jesse Smollett, the one, that, the one that said he got beat up by a bunch of maggots. What's that? What? I, what that? What does that have to do with with me? It's it's fake news. It's propaganda. It pisses me off. I can't stand people that are just spreading fake news. You know what I mean? Whether it's one side or the other. You know what I mean? We gotta we gotta d dissect uh, either side. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of places that can be trusted. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm like an aspi I'm uh, like an aspiring singer, or whatever. I hate to cut you off. I'm sorry. Calm down. <laughs> um, we talking about anti vax. So you say you're anti vax and you're waiting. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I got I got a song I got a song about the Constitution. Hold on, let me just do this if I can do it real fast. All right, check it out. So cut you off. I swear to God. What? No, it takes two seconds. It's thirty seconds. I promise. Cut you clean off. I swear to God. No proper. All right. No Jesse Smollett involved. Um, we're not here for that. No, no, it's a song. It's a song. It's not nothing negative. I promise. All right. So Constitution took days and nights. Writers still had to take a look at. This is not the clout channel, man. I told you. I told you. You could have been on here for the next three hours just talking about your points of view, but this ain't this ain't America's Got Talent, man. I appreciate you though. I didn't even hear you I didn't even hear you say call me Jesse. I didn't even I wouldn't even have took that as a hit. I didn't even see you say it. So, you know. Next. Um appreciate you for tuning in though. Uh, back to what the hom homie did ask a very interesting interesting question. Um, who is this brother? Yo, can you uh, is this Hakeem Hakeem Future Speaks? Can you uh, can you comment in the uh, can you comment in the uh, in the comment section, and I could bring you into the live from there. Appreciate that. Cause it ain't just here, you know, like there's, I'm sure there's anti-vaccination uh, things going over all around the world. It'd be interesting to see. Oh, I got you, my man. Do 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 no, but I'll be, I'll be reading the news, bro. So that's why I was trying to say, see what you know about what's overseas, bro. I don't know. What's going on? Fill me in. Yeah, well, okay. You know, that there's a lot of protests going on in Brazil right now, bro, about uh, that they in support of their president. He, like, he taking a real, like, anti-vaccine stance. So he, like, no, nah, we're going to be one of them countries that's not going to take the vaccine, not going to make it mandatory. And they really protesting right now. But in Dutch, I mean, like, in the Dutch people, though, it's, like, the opposite going on. They president took a, like a real strong mandatory. He made it mandatory for them to take vaccines, right? Mm. But just because of their protest, they didn't, he didn't change his mind for right now. Let's see what's happening. 
Well, but the Brazil is old, and just so just so you know, uh, everybody in Brazil don't don't agree with Bolsonaro. Like Bolsonaro, kind of a piece of shit, you know. Kind of like he kind of like the Donald Trump of Brazil. You feel me? Oh, word. With that said, he the, he has following because he represents that half. Same way Donald Trump has a massive following. He represents seven million, eighty million people. Um, so that's not like a signal to me that has nothing to do with the effectiveness of the vaccine. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. That yes, yeah. there are influential people who are going to take a stance and they're going to have some supporters, right? And that's just what that is. But just, you know, sometimes numbers don't really mean shit. You know, like you have a bunch of people talking about a bunch of nothing and just because you got a bunch of people talking about a bunch of nothing. That don't mean that once you hit 70 million, it becomes something. Like, it's still nothing. Right? It's just a lot of stuff talking about. Uh, That's right. In Holland, which is Dutch, Dutch is, is Holland, right? So in Holland, um, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a difference. That's a more liberal society. Um, you know, they've been smoking weed over there and fucking hoes on the street. Wow. Long, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they got a lot of freedoms. <laughs> you know, um, and part of that when you got a country that has that has a uh, has for a long time had a lot of freedoms, anything that comes out of the government that seems like a mandatory thing might get a, a reaction. You know what I'm saying? So it's not mm. not too hard to to see what you're saying, and you know to be to comment on the the news pieces you saw. Received. Both of those things have nothing to do with the effectiveness of the. Right, so you see, so you see, like the majority of like global protests, you see them as like influence both as like two sides that have like a major influence from like uh, maybe like societal figures or public figures, as opposed to like opposing facts or like opposing a uh, 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 positions. They're not arguing facts. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You can't really yeah. argue facts. <laughs> you know? What right. I'm that's the, right. Right. That's what the thing about a fact. A fact is, is is supposed to not be able to be argued or is not a fact. Right. right. <laughs> um, so I think what you're saying, again, most politics ain't facts. You know, like it's something that can be argued. Um, and, you know, a mandatory, you can argue a mandatory uh, rejection of the vaccine or a mandatory application of the vaccine. You can argue that because that mandatory thing is a policy thing. It's a po political thing. But the, right, right. The, the thing, you can't argue that. You know? Yeah. You can't, and I say yeah. you can't argue it right now because we don't know yet. Right? Like it's still being tested. And all of the pre preliminary, preliminary tests that we've seen thus far have shown it to be highly effective. Right for what it said it needs to do, right? It ain't finna cure cancer or make you grow wings so you can fly around. But what it's supposed yeah. to do for COVID nineteen is that it's gonna do, and the this, the facts of science are kind of proving that. So wherever you see it in the world, under hopefully you you you're looking at the the political situation that those countries are in presently, currently, and maybe for what it for over the time. So a place like a place like Holland is very liberal, very open. Right. A lot of freedom. A uh, place like Brazil comes from authoritarian governments. You know, mm. people telling you what you can and can't do. And a lot of kind of crime and other kind of black market type aspects of the country and, and different things, wealth disparities and all type of craziness. So just be a little bit more in tune with the politics of the situation and any, any politics that, that, that peaked their head around COVID-19. And I would guarantee you that the politics of the place where it's coming from have more to do than people understanding of the disease or the vaccine. Okay. So, like, when it comes to, like, these governments, bro, or world government uh, specifically, do you take a stance that it should be more government or it should be less government of people? You know what I'm saying? Because if it's, if it's, like, if you agree with, like, more government or, like, the current situation, especially, like, like America that we're in right now, then it's kind of, then I can understand, like, why it'd be like a trustworthy situation of we're going to take this vaccine because it's kind of like anything else, like a vaccination for when you have a baby or something like that, right? Mm. But then, like, it, it, you, you don't see, like, or I'm not going to say you don't see, but can you see the issue in, like, 
a totalitarian society issuing like mm. something mass like this? I mean, Jesus told you not to be fake. No. Did he? Right. <laughs> You're not supposed to be beating your dick. Right. But I'm I'm sure dicks are being beat all <laughs> over the all over the whole. You feel me? Nuts, but hey, you know, hey, you know, you know, you know, you know the high deep though. It say that you can do it. You know, what I'm saying if it keep you, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> from sexual advance. You know, what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> um, what I bring that up to say is, we a lot of us already have a very intimate relationship with totalitarian regimes. Facts, right? That have been running our lives, the lives of our parents, the lives of our parents, parents are gonna run the lives of our children, they're gonna run the lives of our children. Right? Mm. And we've never come into contact with any of the people that have started these things. Ever. We can't, right? Mm. Two, three thousand years. Right? Mm. Um, so we some of us already have a very, 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 very intimate relationship with totalitarianism. And some folks and authoritarianism and some folks their rejection of government is they feel like government is impeding on the authoritarianism that they already practice right right yeah <laughs> they trying to they like yeah. oh, let me keep my bullshit you feel me um mm -hmm. and you got other folks who i think don't really understand how much the government don't really give a fuck about you right they're not really interesting your day to day even in a place even in a place like china where there's this assumption that it's just a, a surveillance blanket over everything and they can see everywhere you go. now yeah. certain cities it's kind of like that but they ain't got cameras in the toilet my g like they ain't got it ain't as it ain't as, <laughs> deep as people making it right and yeah. it's they're not really interested in i would say 90 percent of your life right like you can go, yeah. you can go wherever you want. You can. They're really interested in making you some type of consumer. That that part, they're interested in making sure that you're not going to do anything that's subversive to the to the inner workings of the yeah. government, which is another thing, right? Which right. is true, not just in China. That's happening right now in uh, where is it in Ghana? I think it's Ghana. oh yeah, the Ghana. I don't, don't want to misspeak. I don't know if it's Ghana right now, but it's one country that's going through. There was like a rapper. Who was running to be president? No, that's not Ghana. That's uh, hold on. That's uh, damn. I'm gonna find out real quick. Hold on, bro. Yeah, yeah. Ain't yeah, yeah. Hold on, bro. Uh, just keep going though. I'm listening to you. Yeah. yeah. So you got countries, uh, all over the world that depending on what the who's in power, they suppressing shit like crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. you can't. You some place you can't even pull money. You got Uganda, Uganda. It's Uganda, where Uganda, Uganda, right? Uganda. Uganda. Yep. Bobby Wine, that's his name. Yep. Yeah, so like that, the president was like, nah, he's going to jail, and we finna, you know, that's just what that is. Yeah, they got, they got him out the way real quick. No, <laughs> I hope the brother gets some justice. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know his story either. You feel me? I'm no, he got that. He was just on. He just had an interview on BBC, bro. I just watched it about two months ago. He had a, a real in-depth interview on BBC, so he out. He's still campaigning, but you know it's a dangerous situation for him. But he still he got out though, bro. No, I think he back in. Like when the past like oh. days. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it's like some right yeah. shit happening right now. Let me see. Let me see. No, oh shit, bro. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. 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 I thought he, I thought he died. It said. Oh, Bobby Wine's released, 37 dead. No, he released, they just released him. Okay. On November 20th. So, so he went back. He was right. We both was like late on the news, you know what I'm saying? Like he went back and now he just got out on the 20th. So, so yeah. there's something too like, uh, you know, how much of the government, depending on what country you live in, right? And mm -hmm. some aspects of your life that the government cares a whole lot about and there's other aspects mm -hmm. of your life where the government will let you die on the street. Right, and they'll sweep your body into the sewer type situation, right? So yeah. it depends on where you at. And sometimes we like to project the authoritarianism of other places here, right? We try to create this empathy or this kind of like solidarity with certain groups in certain places and what they experience. But we can't experience that, man. Like, 
We there ain't no way we can really. I mean, we can empathize, but we can't find solidarity with somebody living during the time of apartheid. We can't even begin to to even like. How do you fuck do you even do that? Like we don't even understand the players and the parts and the pieces of it to even to begin to project some of the energy into our government system. Right now, we might have yeah. details that are relevant to each other or certain details that are in alignment. But I mean, there's other forces and factors that we just don't have, right? To make it, to make it seem like we uh we're under the same boot as other countries, cause we not. Yeah. We don't have certain so certain places. People like to bring up Cuba, right? Yeah. And there is this thing in the Nation of Islam, but they they <laughs> they talk about they can't they ain't taking no vaccines. But Minister Louis yeah. Farrakhan said if Cuba vaccine prove out to be working, then they gonna take it. You yeah, because they leave they leave the world in medical research, right? You know what I'm saying? But in medical practice. Cuba also is stuck in time, right? Because of the I think it's very, like a cultural and from a cultural perception. The the policy yeah. of that country solved that country, right? Yeah, for sure. A certain part of Cuba ain't all that cool. You know what I'm saying? Not modern. Yeah. You still got to get the yellow fever vaccine to go there. <laughs> you Damn. know things that still. Yeah. You ain't got to take no yellow fever vaccine to go to, to the UK. You ain't got to take one to go to Japan, you know. Yeah. The most medically advanced, you know, country, and at least it's touted to be that way. I don't believe that's the case. But, I mean, it's other aspects of that society that the government has not, has, has somewhat sacrificed to make it a leader in the medical field. You know what I'm saying? And there's a history yeah. of that happening in countries like that. Where you got you got people that were doctors forced to go work in the fields. I yeah, I believe that I do generally believe that Cuba is the is the most medically advanced society just from the state of that they are a socialist state. So they always doing free stuff, and when you're doing free stuff, you practice it more. You know what I'm saying? So they're doing more medical work, so they get the ex you know what I'm saying they get the expertise from doing it way more because it's free. You know what I'm saying? So I could. The free aspect of you got to be careful with, right? Because Cuba's also supported, it has partners in the world. It's not just like by itself, you know? So it right. has relationships to right. its countries. At one point in time, the main backer of Cuba was the Soviet Union, right? Right, right. Russia. Right. So it wasn't like they was doing it in and of themselves, right? The other aspect right. of free shit is nothing's free, you know? And right. 